In this video, I want to talk about how we go about doing IV estimation for the case where we have multiple regressors. So the relationship of interest might be something like y is equal to alpha plus beta x, or beta 1 times x, plus beta 2 times z1 plus epsilon. And the reason I've sort of denoted this second regressor in our relationship as z1 um, is because of the fact that I'm assuming that there is no covariance between z1 and epsilon. In other words, z1 is exogenous, so we're going to use x's from now on to denote endogenous variables and z's to denote, to denote exogenous variables. So just saying that again, we're going to use x to denote endogenous variables and z's to denote exogenous variables. Okay, so in situations like this, you might ask, can we just use Z1 as an instrument for X? Because we know by assumption that, or by definition, that Z1 is uncorrelated with the error term. And it might well be the case that Z1 is correlated with X. Well, it turns out that we actually can't because of the fact that essentially each variable on the right-hand side requires its own instrument. And each of those instruments has to be different. So in these circumstances, even though Z1 is exogenous, it still requires its own instrument, which in this case, the best instrument to use for Z1 is just Z1, because Z1 is obviously correlated with Z1, and Z1 is not correlated with the error term. So it turns out that in multiple regression situations, we actually require a, another instrument, which doesn't appear in the sort of equation of interest. So we require some other instrument, which we're gonna call Z2. But something you might ask is, well, why don't we just run, instead of running this sort of original equation of interest, why don't we just remove Z1 from this original equation? So we just have Y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 X plus some error V. And then why don't we just use Z1 as an instrument for X in those situations? Well, the problem is, is because this V now essentially contains beta 2 Z1, we know that Z1 is going to be very, very much correlated with this error term. So Z1 in this sort of second regression model is not going to be a very good instrument at all. So what are the conditions on Z2 that make it a good instrument to use in the sort of multiple regression framework? Well, the idea is that our first stage regression that we run is we run a regression of X on delta naught plus delta 1 times z1 plus delta 2 times z2. And it turns out that this is the correct form of the first stage regression to use in the multiple regression framework. And our condition on z2 is that z, well, the coefficient of z2 in this first stage regression has to be not equal to zero. In other words, after we've parceled out all the other effects of all the other exogenous variables, Z1 being the only one in this situation, then Z2 still must have some sort of effect. So our two conditions on Z2 are that delta 2 has got to be not equal to zero, and the covariance of Z2 with our error in our first regression has got to be equal to zero. And as it turns out, these two regressions, the sort of first one of interest and the second one, which is our sort of first stage regression, which we run in an IV, IV situation, actually have names. This first stage regression, we actually refer, refer to as the structural equation. And this first stage regression, we actually refer to as the reduced form equation. And these names actually come from the simultaneous equation model situation, which we're gonna discuss in future videos, but I just wanted to bring in these two sort of expressions here because they're commonly used when talking about IV estimators. So let's now talk about the sort of generalized situation whereby we have a structural equation, which is something like Y is equal to alpha plus gamma times X plus beta one times Z one plus all the way sort of beta two times Z two, all the way up to beta K minus one times Z K minus one plus epsilon. So that's our structural equation. Well then what's the valid reduced form equation that we need to run as our first stage? Well, as it turns out, we need to run a regression of X on delta naught plus delta one times Z one 
plus delta 2 times z2 all the way up to delta k minus 1 times z k minus 1. So as it stands at the moment, what we've got is we've got z1 as acting for a, as an instrument for z1 in the structural equation. And then we've got sort of z2 is acting as a instrument for z2 in the structural equation, all the way up to zk minus 1 is acting as an instrument for zk minus 1 in the structural equation. So the problem at the moment is our x variable here is still endogenous. So we require some instrument to act for this x term here. And as it turns out, we might be able to find another instrument, which I'm going to call zk. So we, all we need to do is we need to include delta k, z, k in our reduced form equation. And then what we've got is we've got this z, k as acting as an instrument for x in the structural equation. And the conditions for z, k to be a good instrument are that delta k has got to be non-zero. And we've got to have that the covariance of z, k with the original error in our structural equation has got to be equal to zero. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the explicit form of IV estimators in the multiple regression framework. I'll see you then.